This technique is a neurodynamic assessment for the tibial nerve. But first, let's take a look at the anatomy. The sciatic nerve originates from L4 down to S3. It will then pass through the greater sciatic foramen, through the deep gluteal space, passing just lateral to the ischial tuberosity, where it will then continue down the posterior aspect of the thigh, deep to the biceps femoris. It will then bifurcate as it continues down as the tibial nerve and also the common fibular nerve. The tibial nerve will pass through the popliteal space and travel deep through the posterior compartment, deep to the soleus muscle and superficial to the tibialis posterior muscle. So here we can see that tibial nerve continuing straight down it will then pass on the medial aspect of the ankle, posterior to the medial malleolus, where it will then give off branches to the medial calcaneal branch of the tibial nerve. It will then further divide into the medial plantar nerve, which then gives off branches to the common plantar digital branches of the medial plantar nerve. It will also give off a branch to the lateral plantar nerve. And the lateral plantar nerve then further divides into the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve and also the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve. Here we can see by isolating the tibial nerve, passing medial to the ankle, posterior to the malleolus, we can see the medial calcaneal branch, the lateral plantar nerve and the medial plantar nerve. To perform a neurodynamic assessment for the tibial nerve, we have our patient in a supine position. Now we can start with a proximal to distal assessment to start with. So to perform this, we're simply moving into a straight leg raise, so passively elevating the patient into hip flexion while maintaining knee extension. Now we're looking for the onset of their familiar symptoms. Now if we can recreate their symptoms, they start to experience some discomfort, what we do is then bring them out of that position slightly, rest their leg on our shoulder, and then we're going to move the foot into dorsiflexion. If we move into dorsiflexion and a slight amount of eversion, and that reproduces the patient's familiar symptoms, that would be a good indication that the tibial nerve may be involved in their pain presentation. We can further assess this by bringing them into a little bit of knee flexion, while maintaining them in dorsiflexion and eversion. Now, if that changes their symptoms, once again, that can give us a good indication that the tibial nerve may be involved. Now, to assess the tibial nerve mechanosensitivity from distal to proximal, what we can do is take up the tension of the nerve at the foot to start with. So we move our patient into dorsiflexion, cupping around that midfoot, and then moving them into eversion. Maintaining that position, we then want to lock our elbow down on the patient's shin as we then lean back moving them into a straight leg raise. So we've taken up that tension distally and then moved them into a straight leg raise and we're looking for a recreation of their familiar symptoms. Now, if this does recreate their symptoms, what we can do is maintain the foot in dorsiflexion and eversion as this is maintaining tension through that tibial nerve and then introduce a slight amount of knee flexion. Now, if that decreases their symptoms, once again, that can indicate that the tibial nerve may be mechanosensitive. To perform a neurodynamic sliding technique to mobilize the tibial nerve through its mechanical interface, we bring our patient into hip flexion and knee flexion. We can then move them into dorsiflexion and eversion because this will take up the tension of that tibial nerve distally, but it will reduce the tension of the tibial nerve at the posterior aspect of the knee. So while maintaining this position through the foot, as we extend the patient's knee, we then move them into plantar flexion and inversion. And then we repeat this. So as we go into dorsiflexion eversion, we bring them into knee flexion plantar flexion inversion as we extend the knee. So we're taking up the tension at the posterior part of the knee, but decreasing the tension of the tibial nerve distally. 
So doing multiple repetitions of this technique can improve the nerve's movement through its mechanical interface and decrease its overall sensitivity. Now to provide that same neurodynamic mobilization technique to our patients, we can provide them with a TheraBand or they can use a towel or a belt or a strap. And what we're gonna do is get them back into this hip flexion, knee flexion position with the, the band around the foot, holding onto the band. And we're gonna have them in dorsiflexion E version and then going to move into knee extension with plantar flexion inversion and mobilizing through that multiple times is a great self-mobilization exercise that they can do at home. So we are up and in, down and out. Up and in, down and out.